Okay guys, we know it's been quite a long time since we covered Kuroko no Basuke. The last video we did was 10 things you didn't know about Aomine Daiki, right? And we recommend you guys to watch it if you haven't already. But anyways, we have always been a massive fan of this anime since its release. So in this video, we'll be comparing the moves in which the mangaka and the anime producers implemented into the anime Kuroko no Basuke and how they are done in real life. Hopefully, we can do a part 2 to this video if you guys can comment below more NBA players that display the moves we see in the anime or even for that matter anything we have missed. Look guys, the things we see in Kuroko no Basuke are not a coincidence at all. Just take a look at this. Alright, jokes aside, for the first breakdown, we of course have to start with the main man himself, Kuroko. Without him, we'd obviously not have this show moving along at all. Tadatoshi Fujimaki, the creator of the series, had travelled to America a lot and watched multiple NBA games. He even stated most of the popular moves all transcend from the NBA, in particular the Vanishing Drive. The Vanishing Drive is a very special move that had kicked off the excitement in Kuroko no Basuke. You know, when the first time I saw it, my mind was blown. It's, you know, it's such, a, it's such a mesmerizing attack that the likes of Kagami and many more opponents were like, NANI? We believe the direction for Kuroko was to appeal to many of us in general by being the total average basketball player, but he specializes in one distinctive move that would turn the tide. The Vanishing Drive was inspired by Manu Ginobili. Hopefully I pronounced his name right. And yeah, it, that's right. It's inspired from the legend himself. It keeps me lean and mean because it's got 45% less sugar and it's lactose free. This is good. It's good. Come on, man. It's good, man. That's all you got. What happened? No one's good. The international and Spurs legend was actually the creator of the Vanishing Drive. His move had inspired Fujimaki, the creator of the series, to revolve Kuroko's character around it and made Kuroko exactly like the move. For example, Kuroko's presence is never sensed and it's so is his Vanishing Drive. Watch this. When it comes to power moves or signature attacks within Kuroko no Basuke, the characters that stand out with a varied range of things was none other than Kagami or Kisei, right? As their ability to adapt in certain situations, it couldn't be competed against. The skill, for example, that Kagami had kept him progressing even against the biggest of opponents. So one of his moves shown in the anime and manga, it was definitely brought upon by the NBA. He of course was raised in the US for quite some years, which it makes sense, but this accent really doesn't convince us, right? This is Japanese lunchtime rush! Regardless of his perfect English, or English, actually we can't talk about that, you know what I mean? I butcher so many things, I'm a butcher shop right in here, especially with my pronunciations. Nonetheless, Kagami represents a really famous basketball player who is known for slam dunking against big opponents that stand in his way, god damn it. The move slam dunk is obviously a really common move, so it's easy to say that Kagami could be LeBron James or Kobe Bryant. However, Fujimaki handpicked all sorts of iconic moves whilst in the US, so it gets pretty clear once you see it for yourself. <laughs> Oh, 
It's a physical game. Oh, 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 a monster jam by Blake Griffin. Mirroring moves that are seen in the NBA to a shounen manga. It really makes Kurokono Basket worthwhile for some fans that don't watch or play basketball on a daily basis to kind of appreciate the sport. I mean, if you do play basketball, you kind of be like, oh my god, what is this shit? What am I watching? But you'll be so hyped and more anticipated to play basketball the next day. So I think it's a win win situation. Usually, sports anime they hype moves to a different level and they even break the laws of physics, but that's not always the case with this series, right? Right, even though it did sometimes, when you see the comparison of both of it, it really is compulsive. So with fast paced moves comes the fast break. This is a basic yet effective play, typically with so many ballers using it in order to rack up points in quick succession. But during the finals with the Cavaliers going against the Warriors recently, there was one precise play which totally made us have a flashback of a fast break. It was used in Kurokuno Basket. This fast break made us come to a conclusion that maybe Kevin Durant and St Stephen Curry were in the mirror image of Oemine and Sakurai. What if you guys can remember? Although it's just a mere coincidence with Kurokuno Basuke, completing its airing way before the 2018 finals, right? We just thought this was kind of iconic. Pass deflected by Green. Curry and Durant. Curry throws it up. Otter Smith ante Curry. Recibe el 2 contra 1. Que bien Green. Que roba Clay Thompson. Sale al contraataque el equipo de la Bahía. El alio. Alright guys, one thing we have to admit when it comes to basketball is that size is everything man, <laughs> especially when you have a defensive role to play, even at the tip off where it can give your team the advantage to get a few points early into the match, but it doesn't usually work out for Murasaki Baro the way he thinks. Anyways, Murasaki Baro's defense is literally impenetrable. It would honestly take you a whole lot of time to score a few points against this giant, which is why Kagami was more burnt out than usual after defeating Murasaki Baro. Moving on, there are only a few significant players in the NBA who have such a good defense, you know, like Kevin Durant, Shaquille O'Neal, Draymond Green, to name a few. But an underground and underrated legend called Hakeem, uh, um, <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce his second name, but Hakeem was dominant from the mid 80s to the 90s. Now I'm just gonna call him Hakeem from now on because I don't want to disrespect. Hakeem stands as one of the best defensive players to grace the NBA. It really emulates through Murasaki Baro because the same problems Kagami had against him is what pro players would always have against Hakeem. Just take a look at this and you'll witness some amazing plays as a defensive player. This one is quite evident from the fact that there are only two people whose shooting are as good as each other's and one being able to break the laws of physics uh, literally and the other guy has just natural ability. Fujimaki's input of seriousness and humour, it really fits the scenery of Midorima at times, especially when he is a complete perfectionist and he relies on a lot of luck. You could say this luck turned him into a god because the projectile of his shots are not even possible at all in real life. I'm going to do a video on this, make sure you hit the notification button about this. But the calculations just don't add up with the mind that it just creates special moments like this. 
戻るぞ高尾ディフェンスだこれで外したら俺もどやされんだけどバカを言うな高尾俺は運命に従っているそして人事は尽くしただから俺のシュートは<笑>まだ<笑>落ちいや押せえよてか自分でもタイミング合わないほどホールってどうなのよ<笑> Midorima is a very unique three point shooter, and who else is the king of three pointers, guys? You're probably typing it in or thinking it right now, right? Yeah, it's Stephen Curry. We mentioned him earlier in the video with his involvement in the fast break. His talent doesn't only restrict him to having one signature move, right, being introduced into the series, but in fact, implement it's implemented into Midorima's character. Stephen Curry, his significant impact on the NBA has made him an all time great, with the majority of his shots being taken from the three point distance, and that is what Midorima is also made of. The ability that he has is very、uh, complementary to what we are all seeing and everything. Just check this out. Just check this out, boy. Curry's gonna have to put it up, launches it up, shot clock. Oh, he knocks it down! Steph Curry with the shot clock expiring! Anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I am going to do more Kurokono Basket videos in the future. So, I don't know if you should expect it pretty soon, but don't subscribe. <laughs> Any anyway, guys, I hope you understood everything I said. And if you want a part two, comment below. And also, let me know a few moves that we missed or anything that you want to bring up, like a few NBA players. Because I am going to do a Mida Rima、uh, video explaining how he's just completely broken. And yeah, I'll catch, follow us on Instagram or Twitter, and I'll see you guys next time.